Good morning, everyone. Let's give a praise, clap of thanksgiving to Jesus. It, I want to thank every one of you for coming out on Sunday morning, on the first day of the week. And it's what you're doing. You're worshiping God. And part of worship, what is worship? Part of it is just being, saying thank you. We could get so caught up in life with our problems, shortcomings of others, our personal shortcomings, that if you don't watch it, you could be so focused on the wrong that you become bitter, angry, impatient, unhappy. And this is a time for us to reset our focus. Thank God you're here. Thank God you have life. Thank God you still have hope. Thank God that there's a future and it could be better than the past. You're here. You have enough health to be here. So it's, these songs that we're si singing and I think, I said, how can I ever wander away? I'll tell you how you can wander away. You can forget what God has done for you. That he loved you when the people that are trying to tempt you away from God betrayed you and turned their backs on you. There's a God. Some of your family have turned their backs on you. God said, I haven't. I still love you. Check this out. I still believe in you. Isn't that good? I'm so glad you're here and, and we, we're getting ready. Easter is only like, I think, four weeks away. Four weeks away. I know we're full right now. I mean, I don't know what, how, where we're going to put people on Easter, but but we do have a focus. We have overflows everywhere. And we have, our, uh, we have a 6 o'clock service, um, sunrise service on Sunday. We're going to have a Friday, uh, Friday service and a good Friday service. And then we'll have our 9 and 11 and 1.30 Spanish. What we want to do is do our best to invite people. And I'll even say this, bring them. Say it with me, bring them. I, I just had a, a, one of the ushers here. He, he talked to me early this morning. And he told me he was at the grocery store and he had a, a shirt that said, I'm a servant. And then, while he was in line, people were saying, man, I like that shirt. And he goes, well, I go to the Way World Outreach. He just started selling the Way World Outreach, giving all kinds of tickets, right? There's no tickets. You just get her flyers. But, but there was a lady that came in and she was walking over here in the conversation and she was saying, can you guys, do you guys give out food? Because I really need food. And he says, we'll give you food. I'll make sure we get you food. But here's $100 to get some groceries today. And, but we'll come and give you some food today. So today we're going to get her, get her a whole groceries. We're going to take it to her. But we gave her 100 bucks. And she said, I would like to come to church. She goes, but I have no way to get there. I have no transportation. If someone could just bring me, I'll come. And then I started realizing as I'm hearing this, this whole idea of on Easter, let's be Christian Ubers. Could we be a Christian Uber on Easter? Now, how many know Uber is like a multi-billion dollar business because people need rides? And there's some people that won't come to church even if they have a car. But their car, they've used it for so many wrong things. Their car like has a hindrance or stronghold on it. It could go everywhere but church. I know your car can't get to church. Well, let me help you. My car can get there. And um, I want to be intentional. We have a car in the, in the foyer. Next week, I want you to write down. Next week, we're going to give you a card. And I want you to pray about it. Just five names that you'd like to see come to church on Sunday on Easter Sunday or Easter weekend. And what we're gonna do is put those cards in that car and we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray every card that's in that car. By faith, you're saying they're getting in the car, whether it's their car or your car. Wouldn't it be great that you say, my car is a Christian Uber and I'll fill every seat that's available. If you got four cars, you got a lot of Ubering to do. Fill them all. How many believe that there's a person for every seat if you start looking and searching and praying? So we're going to do that. We are moving in. That's going to be Easter. 
Um, we're also moving into marriage challenge. And, and this is a time for four weeks that we work on relationships. If you're single, this is a great time for you to understand relationships. And I do know this, God's not going to release a husband or wife to you if you're unprepared. Part of get release is preparation. So that's one thing. The other thing, it, uh, there's people out there. If you're married, then sign up. Now, the reason I say sign up, because you're not going to get a packet if you don't sign up. It's going to be four weeks. So we're going to work on, we're going to have a singles packet, and then we're going to have a married packet. But you want to get your packet. So for 30 days, we're going to be better at relationships. And if you get good at relationships, you'll be really good at life. Most people are not very good at relationships. But if you learn that skill, which is the number one skill you'll ever learn, is how to deal with difficult people, and you're one of them, I mean, come on. You'll be happier in life. And, and it's the number one skill to learn. So we're going to learn that. Um, but this is what we want to do. We want you, this is our big, someone say outreach. So, of course, we're going to work on a marriage a relationship for 30 days, four weeks, and then have a big graduation, a mass wedding at the end. But this is a good opportunity to invite your friends, your relatives, and sign them up. Now, understand this. Sign them up, and on Easter, they could pick up their full packet. It's going to be the book, Love and Respect. It's going to be a whole packet of homework and things that we're going to be able to do in 30 days. It's going to have times for dates and all kinds of stuff on there. It's going to be really good. You're going to prepare for relationships. By the time you're done, you're going to be more prepared than ever. The, the author of Love and Respect, he's coming to San Bernardino. I, I think right now they should have a parade. He's coming to San Bernardino. He's the number one speaker on marriage in the whole world. He's coming to the Way World Outreach. Montel Jordan, his wife's going to be here. It's just going to be an amazing seminar. You know, a seminar like this, if you, if you invested in going for just a weekend, would cost you probably thousands of dollars with it with airfare and, or maybe a hotel and time spent, plus the conference will call you, cause you at least $600 to go to a conference like that. But here, it's really covered. The church is covering. Let's do our best. Come on. I need everyone to at least bring one couple. Come on, everybody bring one couple. You, so you got 30 days to find a couple, a married couple that's maybe hurting. I, I know I have neighbors and I know they're struggling. I'm going to be knocking on their doors. I know your marriage is struggling. Come to church. we got 30 days. It's a 30-day challenge. And we're challenging people to work on their marriages for 30 days. How many believe that people need to work on their marriages? And you can't get a return if there's no investment. Now, I'll say one more thing. We are in expansion mode. Say it with me. We're in expansion mode. Um, right now, this, next, this week coming up, I'm going back to Arizona. We are... We are I'm looking right now to expand a church in Arizona. Um, the church has been a church for 12 years, and they're ready to surrender the reins of that church to the Way World Outreach. They've done their best. They prayed. Out of all the churches in the world, they want to give us everything. And they have two, two buildings. One of the buildings is a theater, beautiful building. I'll show you pictures next week. Um, but when we're taking over the building... The building, I would say, is probably worth like $4 million. Um, and then they have another property that's worth, I don't know, $400,000. And they're transferring everything to the way. Um, the debts, the debt, I'm, tell, I'm telling you what, what's going on. The debt is $791,000. And what I want to do, and this is what I want to do. We don't have to do this, but I, I would like to do this. I would love to get that campus debt free. That we're servicing people, not servicing debt. How many believe that would be a good idea? Servicing people, not debt. I don't want to like add and get, add more debt and more debt. It's just too much stress. So what does that mean? Uh, we're on, on Easter, let's bring a resurrection offering as the Lord's leading you. And I'm going to tell you how easy that would be. Also, we want to expand. We want to build a school in Kenya. Now, the, it's one of the ways. Right now, Muslims are building schools in Kenya. Because to go to school, it's not like the public school system today. There they have to pay and the people are in poverty. So kids that are real poor don't go to school. So they're not only poor, but then they, they don't get the education and they get farther and farther behind. And the Muslims are saying, we'll open a school, but you must become a Muslim. So that's how they're evangelized in the area, providing school. We're going to go ahead and if the devil has a strategy... If religion has a strategy, how many believe that we should have a strategy? And if anybody should have a school, it should be the way we're all outreach in that area. 
our kids are orphans and our in our orphanage they're not orphans anymore we're they're we're they got family now we're their family but our children they we pay for them to go to school every single one of the kids we pay we, we, we provide their uniforms and we send them to school every single day how we we provide that we pay for that. but how many would believe it would be better if we built a school with our own teachers how many believe that'd be great we, we looked at we looked at the cost for that to build because we, they don't have a building we're going to build the building and then get salaries for the teachers professional teachers to launch that school would only cost us around seventy thousand dollars building it and 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 covering the teachers for like like three or four months somebody that would be good so uh, the reason i'm saying this there might be someone say i'll cover that or we cover it together i gotta say this because we're expanding but this the 791 if we had 791 people said man i'll stretch and i'll give a thousand we wrap it up 1500 people so i'll give 500 wrap it up you know 3000 give 250 we wrap it up I, no one has to give to this but if the Lord's leading you and say, I want to be part of establishing a church in an area or a school in an area that really is not working, but we're going to go in there and start a way world outreach in Arizona and start a school in Kenya. How many believe that God is going to bless you? I, you know, I, I, well, I'll say one last thing. My daughter, Annalisa, is sitting there and, and this, she has a testimony this week, which is pretty cool. She came up to me. I think, I think it was Wednesday or something, or no, it was Friday or something like that. And she comes up to me, she's, Dad, let me tell you my testimony, right? Because she, had, she got a check for $535, right? And it was, it was for, for some COVID relief fund, right? So she got a check for $535. She's a Cal State University student. And she brought it to me because I pay her tuition, so she brought it to me. And I go, no, Amma, you could have it. She I could have it. She goes, Dad, let me tell you the testimony. <laughs> she said, this week God told me to give 500 She doesn't work, really. She gets, 150, she gets $150 every two weeks or something like that. So $500 is a lot of money for her. And it's a lot of money for me, too. But, but, but for her, it's a lot, a lot of money. It's like a million dollars. So God told her to give a friend $500 that couldn't pay her bills. And God told her, give it to her. And then she goes, are you sure? <laughs> so the next time she meets with her friend, her friend says, God told me that you're supposed to give me 500 bucks. And she's like, I don't know about that, right? So she ended up giving her 500 bucks through the mail anonymously. And the girl came back, oh, my Lord, worked. He gave me 500 bucks. Somebody gave it to me. And then the next day or a few days later, she got 535. And I told her, I go, honey, I told her more is coming right but she didn't know more I knew more was coming because the day before I bought her a car and she didn't know it her car has been broken down and fenders falling off so the next day she had a car in her driveway and she goes you told me more was coming you knew I go I know look at the date when I bought it I bought it the day before all I'm saying is when we're willing to participate in what God is doing, God's ready to release some favor upon you. How many believe your next level is going to be released as you're allowing God to use you? So we're going to be doing that as a church. Pray about an offering for Easter. And we only led as the Lord's leading us. That's it. We, we don't pressure nobody to give. We're willingly give if the Lord's leading us. And we do it out as an act of, thank you, Lord. Let's expand. And when we're expanding, it's an investment. And God will return favor to you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful time that we have together as a church. The church is the only institution, organization on earth that saves through a message. That helps people like this young lady get delivered from methamphetamines. Give her a sound mind again. Give her hope. Give her a smile give her a dance I saw in her she was on a railroad track ready to kill herself and you said honey it's not over I love you this is a new day and I thank you that message is what we all need and this is a message this world needs 
that there's a loving God that wants to save us, make us whole, and set us free. Speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We're on a series, and, and the name of the series is Jesus Saved Me. Say it with me. Jesus saved me. Now, that's a big statement because someone might come to you and say, are you saved? And you might be saying, like, what are you talking about? Saved from what? But Jesus came on this earth to save sinners. And if you don't know you need saving, you can't get saved. And if you try to save yourself, you're going to be wasting time. Or if you look at someone, you save me. I want my husband to save me. I want my wife to save me. I want them to make me whole. No one can save you. Nothing can save you. There's only one person to call on to be saved, and that's Jesus Christ. We're going to dive into this subject for the next few weeks until Easter. I want you to understand the good news message. We have a message, and it's called the good news. And this message, if we understand it, has the power to save people, make them whole, and give them eternal life and make them into new people. I think if we don't watch it, we give people religion and not the good news. Religion means that you're trying to change people's behavior. We're not here trying to change people's behavior. We're trying to introduce them to the Savior that changes people, period. So we're going to just be introduced to the subject. And I would say this, introduction to Jesus, the Savior. And I want to give you four major truths about salvation. What the Bible says about Jesus being the Savior. And the first point is the name of Jesus, maybe you don't know what it means, it means Savior. No other person or so-called God has ever named themselves a Savior. They've maybe labeled themselves as a teacher or a prophet or a guru, but they never claim to be a savior. Now, that's a big deal because every single person on earth needs to be saved. And religion, what it offers you is a code of ethics or a code of rules. And it tells you, if you obey these rules, rules perfectly, you might be accepted by a perfect God. But we know that if we're given a code of ethics, if we're given rules, all they do is mirror, when we look at them, our disobedience. When I see the speed limit of 55, it convicts me because I'm not driving 55. So many of us, if you hear, don't do it, you do it. So the law or the rules, all they do is reflect our sinfulness. Rules and religion cannot save you. There's only one name to call on to be saved, and it's Jesus. Now, an angel has a meeting with Joseph, which was Mary, Mary's boyfriend or fiance or the one she was committed to be married to. And this is what the angel told Joseph. She will have a son. And, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. This is his name, Jesus. In Hebrew, it be Jesus. And it means Jehovah is salvation or God is salvation. It also means Savior mankind or God incarnate, God in the flesh. Jesus was God in the flesh. He came as a man to save mankind from their sins, from their errors from their wrongs, from their 
failures, from their addiction, from their misery, from their anger, from their hate, from their emptiness, from their prejudice, from their jealousy. We need, we need a savior from their mental illness, from, come on, come from, from every single thing that we're trying to fix. God says, you can't fix you, but I can save you. He came to save us from our sins. You know what that means? Every one of us have messed up. And every mess up comes with consequences. And some of our consequences are so severe that when you think about your failures and you think about the consequences that you've, you're facing, there's a guilt trip you got. Your identity is with your failure. Your identity is not with your savior. And it causes pain. Sin causes misery. It causes deep depression. It causes wrong thinking. It causes a young lady that's smoking meth to go to a train track and tell her, kill yourself. Divorce your husband. Go out there and have an extramarital affair. Medicate yourself. Escape. Numb yourself. And I don't care how much you numb yourself, and it doesn't matter what guy or girl you're with, you're still empty, you're still broken, you still need a savior, and Jesus is the savior. He's the only name that you could call on to be saved. He came to save us. The name of Jesus means savior. Point number two, Jesus personally declared that his mission was to save the lost. So the angel came and told Joseph, go name him, jo uh, J Jesus, the Savior. God, Jehovah saves. Jesus understood his identity. And he understood his mission. He was not here just to prophesy. He was not just here to teach. He was here to save lost sinners. In Luke 19, 10, it says this. For the Son of Man, Jesus is saying this to himself. If you had a red letter edition Bible, it would be in red. Jesus is saying this about himself. He's the Son of Man. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. What he was saying, that word seek means my aim, my desire, what I'm focused on. What I think about all the time is this. Seeking and saving the lost. That word save is a Greek word sozo. So I came to sozo the lost. You need some sozo in your life. What? Sozo means this, to rescue from danger. A life apart from God is very dangerous. It becomes more dangerous every day. This young lady smoking meth. It's very, it's very, she's very dangerous to herself. She's self-destructive. The word rescue means save means also rescue from destruction and judgment. This young lady is suffering on the streets with an addiction that she cannot overcome. She's in a very dangerous place. A life apart from God is very self-destructive. And understand if you're not saved, not only will your life be miserable here on earth, your depression will get deeper. Your anxieties will get deeper. Your worry will grow. But this will happen. Your pain will grow as well. And if you don't watch it, you'll self-destruct. You'll destroy everything that's meaningful in your life. You need and I need to be saved. But not only that, we need to be saved from judgment. 
Sin is this. It's a crime against God. That means we've broken God's law. Every one of us have broken God's law. That means we've lied, we've cheated, we've done things that we know are wrong. But there's no such thing as doing wrong without consequences. I'm going to give you an example. I was talking to someone the other day, and he told me, I, I asked, asked him the question, are, are you saved? If today were your last day on earth, would you go to heaven? And he told me, I think I would. I go, why do you think you would? He goes, because I do a lot of good things. And he started show, telling me every good thing he does. He gives money to causes. He lives a pretty good life. He loves his children. He's a, he said, I'm a pretty good father. I'm a pretty good dad. I'm a good citizen. I go, I guess sin, that's, I, I, I'm not denying that. But the truth is, you've sinned, haven't you? He goes, yeah, I've sinned. I, so do you really believe that you're going to be able to stand before a perfect God and bring all the good things that you've done and say, because I've done all these good things, I'm better than most people, you got to let me into heaven? I told him, I'm going to give you an example. I go, what if? I go, do you have a daughter? He goes, yeah, I got a, let's just say, let's say 15 year old daughter. I go, what if I snuck into your house late at night and I raped your daughter? I rape her, I get caught, they handcuffed me, I'm the guy that did it. You go through the whole court proceedings and at the end, the judge says, Mr. Garcia, do you have anything to say for the crimes you committed against society? the crimes you committed against the Rodriguez family and the crimes you committed against this 15-year-old little girl. And I say, yeah, I do. I'm just hoping after I tell you what I do, you'll let me go. You know what I do? I help homeless people. A matter of fact, before I got arrested, I had two homeless people live in my house and I got a rehabilitation home. And not only that, I'm a member of the Way World Outreach. I give money to St. Jude's. Look at my record. The judge will say, are you serious, Mr. Garcia? Do you really think I'm going to be swayed from ignoring the crimes that you've committed? And do you really think your good works are going to outweigh your bad works? You're not here because you're doing good. You are here standing before me because you're guilty as charged of rape. And you have 20 years in prison and no amount of good is going to make up for your sins. And if you try to... Bribe God or try to get into heaven by your good works. You're going to be like that rapist that's standing before God with your good works or your religion or your membership in a church. And God is saying that's all good, but you're not here to be judged for the good you do. You're here to be judged for your crimes, your sins. I got good news for you. You need a savior, and God has provided a perfect savior to forgive you and cleanse you of every single sin and crime we've committed against heaven. So who did he come to save? He came to save the lost. That word save means to rescue from danger, destruction, and judgment. It means to make well. It means to heal. It means to restore to health. It means to make whole. There's an assumption here that until we're saved, we're empty. There's an assumption here that until we're saved, we're sick. We're sick emotionally. We're sick mentally. We're sick relationally. And you know what happens when you're sick emotionally? mentally, relationally, and you're empty, and you're bound, and you're stuck, and you're addicted, what do you do? You try to find an escape. This is what you're trying to do. You're trying to find a savior. 
Well, maybe if I go to the casino and I win, that will save me. So you go over there, instead of coming to church, you take your little money and you go over there and you're like just, ah, oh, lucky seventh. I know if I win this money, I'll be saved. Not only do you leave with no money, you're broke now and still empty. Or maybe if I just leave my husband and I go with that guy I'm flirting with at work, that will fix me. He'll save me because the one I married is not the one I know it. So let me look for another guy. Let me look for another girl. Do you really think that someone is going to say, if I just get married, I'm single. I just need a guy in my life. Do you really think that a man or a woman can save you, make you whole, and fix you? You got to make sure you're whole before you try to get whole from Christ before you try to find your wholeness from your wife. You know why you're dissatisfied? You're trying to find a savior. A drug can't save you. Heroin can't save you. Pride can't save you. Money can't save you. A promotion can't save you. If, you're, if your wife or husband behave perfectly, that won't save you. You'll still be miserable. You'll still be empty. You'll still be sick. But I thank you. I thank God that today... There's a savior that can make us whole, that can set us free, that can forgive us, give us eternal life. He, I want you to understand that God wants a relationship with you even though you've messed up. He's not here to judge you. He's here to save you. Today could be your day to be made whole. Who did he come to save? The lost. Who are they? We're the lost. Those who have ruined their lives and are extremely miserable because of their sin. These are called the spiritually dead. They're separated from God. They know about God, but they don't have a relationship with him. Maybe they know nothing about God. Those who are separated from God, it, also, it describes those who have been sentenced to death and eternal misery in hell. Now I want you to get this. Every single person here is in either one category or the other. You're saved and going to heaven, or you're unsaved and sentenced to hell. So what God did was send his son as a substitute, and he put our sentence on him. The suffering, the pain, the anguish, the misery of our sin, the guilt, and he put it on innocent Jesus. A perfect man becomes sin for us. We did the crime, he paid the bail. We did the crime, he did the time. God is saying, I love you so much, I can't stand being separated from you. And I'll pay the ultimate price. I'll give my life for your life. And today, all you need to do and all I need to do is realize this. I'm a sinner that needs a savior. And I cannot save myself. I need God to reach down into my pit and reach down into my hurt and reach down into my failure and put me, pull me up and say, son, I love you. I gave my life for you. And I gave my life to save you from the danger, the destruction, and the judgment that's on your life. You could have a new life. And he puts you on stable ground. Today, you can call on Jesus to be saved. If you're lost, you qualify. God did not send his son to judge the world, but to save it. In John 3, 17, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There's no judgment against anyone who believes in Jesus and him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing and God's one and only son. This gives us a key how to be saved. It's not by doing, 
is by believing. If your faith is in you doing good enough to get into heaven, you'll never get into heaven because you're not saved by doing anything. You're saved by believing what Christ has done for you. Salvation is not a reward. Salvation is a gift that we receive by placing our trust in Jesus as our Savior. Today you could be saved right where you're at, right in the pain, right in the failure. You don't have to fix nothing. He's the Savior. He fixes you. He sets you free, and he gets all the credit. Today could be your miracle day. This day could be your day of salvation. So who is saved? Who receives eternal life? Those that believe in Jesus as Savior. We are the lost sinners that need, need to be saved, that Jesus came to save. In Romans 3, 10, it says, as the scriptures say, this is our condition apart from Christ. No one is righteous, not even one. That means apart from Christ, no one is good enough to get into heaven. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God apart from God. All have turned away. Who's turned away from Jesus? Every one of us. All have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. If I try to, like, show off my good works, he goes, nah, I know you did a little good, but look at all the little nasty things you did. Look at this. Their tongue is foul. Have you ever said some foul stuff? Some of you guys are like assassins with your mouth. Your character assassins. Your mouth is sharp. You cut people. You hurt people. Not with your fists, with your mouth. Their tongues are filled with lies. Tell them, I'm not here. You are here. <laughs> Snake venom drips from their lips. This is a condition of us apart from God. We see we have to know our condition that we need a Savior and stop trying to whitewash our lives. And we need God's blood to wash our lives. But the truth is, I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. I need some help. Jesus, save me. I can't get out of the misery. I can't get out of the cycle. I can't get out of the deep depression. I can't get out of the anger. I can't stop being jealous. I can't stop the drugs. I can't stop the drinking. I can't stop the lust. God, save me. Change my life. Make me new. I need you to save me. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Think about it. I don't hear you're not cursing, but I don't know what comes out of your mouth like when we leave here. Blankety blank, 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 and your mama too. <laughs> and God says, son, you need some saving. He's not here to judge you. He's here to save you. But this is the idea. You cannot be saved unless you realize you need some saving. They rush to commit murder, destruction, and misery. Always follow them. Destruction and what? So sinners, this is what your cycle is. Sin, destruction, misery, death. Sin, destruction, misery emotionally, and at the end, it just dies. Your dreams have died. Your joy is gone. Your peace is gone. Your focus is gone. And God says, I've come to save you. I've come to give you back your dreams. I've come to forgive you. I've come to give you back your life. Come on, you can overcome any mistake you've ever made because I came to save lost sinners. Aren't you glad that we serve a God that can take messed up people, messed up marriages, addicts, come on, people that have failed from one generation to the next generation and all they need to do is call on Jesus and he will save them. Point number three, Jesus is the only name we can call on to be saved. There's only one Savior, no one else, no other name, no alternative. In Acts 4.12 it says this, and there is salvation in no one else. The doctor can't save you. Your things can't save you. Your accomplishments can't save you. Your education, 
can't save you. They can't make you whole. They can't heal you. They can't forgive you. They cannot empower you to overcome. They cannot give you eternal life. Your crystals can't save you. Santa Maria Guadalupe cannot save you. Religion can't save you. Muhammad can't save you. Yoga can't save you. Exercise cannot save you. Your six pack can't save you. Your new Gucci perch cannot save you. And your plastic surgery cannot save you because you're still ugly on the inside. And this is what I'm saying. Who are you going to? Who are you calling on? What drug? What alcohol? Is it weed? I can't find peace. <sighs> peace. For how long? What I need, I don't need Jesus to heal me. I need some sexual healing. Come over tonight. I need you. We could ask forgiveness on Sunday. These are all false saviors. And the more you go to them, the emptier you'll be because the misery of sin increases with every go around. All I'm saying, you don't need to go around anymore. Make this your last stop today. Call on Jesus because he's the only name that you can call on to be whole, to be free, receive eternal life, and be made into the person you are always created to be. You were created to be a God person. You were created to have Jesus in your life. You were created to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, not a disciple of the devil. Your gang can't save you. Come on, your name on the streets can't save you, but there's a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ, and until you call on that name, you'll be running in circles from the devil, from fear for the rest of your life. You'll always be miserable. You'll always be angry. You'll always be bitter. Today it's time to place your faith back in Jesus. Take your focus off your husband. Take your focus off the money. Take your focus off your wife and put your focus back on the only Savior that can make you whole. If you never change, I'll be okay because you can't save me. I found one that makes me whole. I found one that makes me complete and it it wasn't you. It was Jesus Christ. When I called on him, he saved me. Look, there is salvation in no one else. But I tell you what, man, I know Kim Kardashian, she just left Kanye. But if I could hook up with something like that, I think she could save me. She's going on her fifth marriage. She's looking for a savior. Her money can't save her. Her cosmetic line can't save her. The clothes she's wearing can't save her. She's going to stand before a savior one day. And if she don't accept him as savior, at that day when she faces him, because every one of you will face Jesus as a savior or a judge. You make up your mind today. Because after you die, it's too late to call on Jesus to save you. The opportunity to be saved is right now. It's today. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Aren't you tired of the cycle of emptiness and depression and torment and bitterness and angry? Today's your day to just surrender. I'm done doing it my way, God. I realize I'm a sinner. I'm tired of it. Jesus! Look at this. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among people by which we must be saved. Salvation is not an option. It's a must. 
you must be saved. Because the alternative is eternal separation from God in hell forever. Well, I don't want to hear about that. It's the truth. For God, look at this, has provided the whole world no alternative for salvation. There's no second choice. Is Jesus or nothing? Is Jesus or bondage? Is Jesus or misery? Is Jesus or dishonor? Is Jesus or lack of integrity? Is Jesus or emptiness? Is Jesus or wasting your life away? And I'll end it with this. Is Jesus or hell? And the last major point. This is theology 101. God wants and has provided a way for everyone to be saved. God wants everyone to be He wants your whole. What is he offering? Wholeness, healing, forgiveness, health, restoration, eternal life, purpose, wholeness. He's offering it to you. He already paid it. All you need to do is believe and receive. Let's look at this last scripture. If anybody said, well, I don't know. Is it God's will for me to be saved? God wants everyone to be saved. 1 Timothy 2.4. Look what it says. God wants everyone to be saved. <laughs> and to fully understand the truth. He wants you to understand the truth. Someone say he wants you to understand the truth. What's the truth? There's only one God. And there's only one way that people can reach God. There's no other way to reach God but this one way. This one God has provided one way. If you think right now that all paths lead to the Lord, you're deceived. You'll be lost. You'll be empty. There'd be no hope for you. There's only one way that people can reach God. Religion can't help you reach God. Your good works can't help you reach God. There's only one way. You're not going to buy yourself into heaven. There's only one way. Look at it says. That way is through Jesus Christ. Who as a man, he gave his life as a substitute to purchase freedom. Freedom from judgment. Freedom from demons. Freedom from hopelessness, freedom from spiritual suicide for everyone, freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. Perfect timing. If you're saying, Pastor, man, I need some saving. I realize I'm lost. I realize my family's lost. I see the pain. I see the hurt. We're in a cycle we can't break. I keep cussing on my wife. She keeps cussing me out. We punch each other in the face once in a while. And we call the police. I feel like I'm going cuckoo for cocoa, but I'm going crazy. I, I'm tired of saying sorry because I keep doing it again. I need some saving. I'm tired of blaming. I need to take some personal responsibility. I'm a sinner that needs a savior. And the more I go around this circle, the crazier I get, the more wild I get, the more prideful I get, the more lustful I get, the more addicted I get, the more confused I get. I'm just tired. How many guys are you going to have in your life before you realize a guy can't save you? When is it going to end? You used to ask like at least for a happy meal before you gave it up. <laughs> now if you just like me, okay. You've lost value for yourself, and you're so valuable to God. I'm not saying just because you devaluated yourself doesn't mean that God has devaluated you. He said, I said, my son, your value is still worth me dying for you. Come on, let's give God some praise and honor and glory. There's a Savior to call him out.
Let's all stand up. We're going to keep talking about Jesus the Savior. The re church, I want to tell you something. The reason, the reason that Christians are so empty is because they're trying to save themselves, fix themselves. And only Jesus could do that. And the reason Christians are so empty because from stages like this, we've turned churches into self-help seminars instead of places where people can get saved. And what we're doing is dealing with your symptoms and not dealing with your issue. Let me give you three steps. You take scriptures and misquote them to just make a fancy sermon that gets people hyped. We're going to get back to the gospel. That's the only message. And the gospel is Jesus saves. It's the only one that could change you. I could, take a, I could take a portion of scripture and create a sermon that would have people running around, but no one getting saved. I guess Jesus rose up. You can rise up. You can do it. Rise up today. Rise up tomorrow. And rise up forever. <laughs> that ain't nothing and you're all high oh my god that was crazy rise up we're gonna overcome this but, I, but see the problem with that I'm telling you to rise up and you can't rise yourself up you need Jesus resurrection power to help you conquer the death that you're facing Jesus is the resurrection of life you're not right I can do all things through Christ, but now I can't do all things. Through Christ, I can do all things. But if you're in this place, and this is as serious because I love every one of you. But we're going to drive this home until we understand that Jesus is our Savior. Next week, you don't want to miss it. Because I'm going to go deeper in what you're saved from. Next week is going to be a little scary. Bring your friends. We're going to scare them all the way to heaven. You got people saying, ah, save me. Next week. Because I'm going to take you into the future without Christ. Way into the future without Christ, a scary place. That's next week. Jesus saved me from that. Now, I will tell you this. I'm saved. I have eternal life. If I were to die right now, I'm going to heaven. Say, Pastor, are you going to be an arrogant? You think you're that good? I go, I know I'm not good. I'm not that good. He saved me. I didn't save me. I just believe that he saved me, and I accepted the free gift of salvation. Now today, I'm going to ask you a question that I asked a friend, a friend years ago. I remember around 17 years, or, or 16 years ago, I asked my friend, his name was Mike. I go, Mike, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? And Mike, I worked with him in the car business, and Mike was a gambler. He loved gambling. And Mike was a womanizer. He loved women. His story was with this girl at the job, this other girl at the job. And I, I told Mike, I go, Mike, you need to be saved. And you know what he told me? I'm not ready. I, I dig what you're saying, but I'm having fun. It's very successful. I remember he just bought a house at Dana Point multi-million dollar home overlooking the ocean, driving the best cars in the world, a multi-millionaire, but he wasn't saved. He didn't know that a couple months later, after I asked him that question, he would come down with stage four cancer at 40 years old, early 40s. He deteriorated super, super fast. I didn't hear from him for a really long period of time and I didn't hear nothing. I got a call in desperation. I'm the only guy he called. He goes, Marco, and I could hear, could barely speak. Marco, Marco, you're the only person I know that knows Jesus. I'm dying and I'm scared. I don't know where I'm going to go, Marco. Will you please come see me? I'm not allowing anybody to see me in the condition I'm in, but will you please come and see me? 
And I remember driving like an emergency crazy person to, to a hospital, one of the best hospitals in Orange County. I went behind that curtain. I was the only person he allowed to visit him all the time he was in the hospital. And when he saw me, he started crying. He goes, Marco, thank you. I'm scared. I'm ready to die. And I don't know where I'm going. And I told him, Mike, I got some good news for you. Jesus wants to save you. Jesus can save you. He paid the price. And salvation is not based on your good works. Salvation is a gift that you can receive right now, Mike. I go, Mike, pray. Ask Jesus to save you and forgive you of your sins. And I heard his prayer. He goes, Jesus, I'm sorry for abusing my wife. I'm sorry for the adultery. I'm sorry for rejecting you. I'm sorry for wasting my life. Save me, Jesus. Forgive me. Give me eternal life. And he's crying. Mike received Jesus. He received eternal life. And I go, Mike. You're ready to go. He goes, I feel it. He goes, I've never felt this peace before. I didn't know where to find it. Thank you, Marco. I go, thank you, Jesus. Not me. I was just a messenger. It was two days later, Mike went into eternity. I ended up doing his funeral, and I remember going to that funeral. There was two miles worth of cars it was like a car show, all $100,000 cars, just amazing. I love cars, and I, just, I go, man, there's a lot of cars here, a lot of money. <laughs> I'm there ready to bury Mike in, in the cemetery. I began to share this message of salvation that everyone needs to be saved. <clears throat> By the time I was done, there was a line of these people that everything in the world, but they were still empty. And they said, they shook my hand, each one of them, and said, today I got saved. I never heard this message before. How come no one ever told us? Thank you for being bold and sharing this story. <coughs> Today, I'm going to give you an opportunity that I gave them to be saved. If you're in this room and you're saying, Pastor, I don't know if I were to die today like Mike. I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know if I'm going to heaven. But I would admit it. There's some emptiness in my life. There's an ache in my soul. I know there's something missing. I've tried to fill it with this, that, and the other. And some of you are very successful, but you're very empty. You have a great business, you're making money, you're educated, but there's still something missing. And you're wondering, what is it? What is it? And I'll tell you what it is. You need Jesus. He's the only one that can make you whole. Jesus makes you complete. You have a missing piece. Is God in your life. So you're saying, Pastor, I want to be saved today. It's a choice. Jesus died publicly for you. Will you publicly declare you want Jesus today? Today he'll save you. If you say yes, you can say yes, you can say no. If you say no, that's your choice. You'll stay in the cycle of misery, pain, and emptiness that you're in, and you won't have eternal life. Don't waste your life away. Today's day. One, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand and say, that's me. I want to be saved. Two, when I say three, raise your hand right now. God's not ashamed of you, won't you? Don't be ashamed of him. Today's your day. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. One, today's your day. Come where you are. Come with your addiction. Come with your pain. Come with your failure. We've all messed up. We all need a Savior. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. I see the hand. Proud of you guys. Proud of you guys here. Proud of you over there. Proud of you over there. Over there, I see the hand. Over there, way in the back, I see the hand. 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 Come on. I want those to raise their hands. I want to thank you for raising your hand, but this is what I want you to do. Will you give me the honor, privilege of praying with you? I want you to leave your seat and come up here real quick. We're just going to do a quick prayer. This is a sign of you leaving your old life in those seats and start a new life with Jesus Christ. Come on, church. Let's celebrate the way heaven celebrates when someone gets saved. Come on, church. Let's celebrate. Someone's giving their life to Jesus. Someone's being saved. Someone's receiving eternal life. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, that's someone's daughter. That's someone's dad. That's someone's mother. 
That's someone's grandma. That's someone's son, daughter. Come on, Jesus is the only one that can save you from meth. He's the only one that can save you from depression. He's the only one that can restore you and make you whole. Come on, live for a purpose. Today's your day of freedom. Today's your day to be saved. Come on, church. We got to be grateful that people are getting saved and baptized in your turn. Thank God we don't have an in and out church. We come in and we leave the same way. We come here and Jesus is saving souls. Give one more praise to God. Come on, they're still coming, church. They're still coming. are awesome. What's your name? Edwin's here, giving his life to Jesus. Proud of you, Edwin. You know, in heaven, they're nation, and every one of you, Edwin just got. Heaven having a party for this. Okay. What's your name, honey? Lupe. Lupe is giving her life to Jesus today. God's saving you. Come on, come on. That's, that's awesome. What's your name, baby? Danielle? Danielle's giving her life to Jesus. How old are you? Four. Oh, 13. Awesome, baby. Proud of you. Come on, she's not alone. Jesus is with her right now. Let's have someone just be with her right now. What, what's your name, baby? Stephanie's giving her life to Jesus. Come on, this is a new beginning for you. You're going to give God your hurt, your pain. Come on, like he can handle it, okay? You're, come on, too much pain, too many letdowns. God says, I got you, okay? Trust in me, follow me. Awesome. Awesome. Proud of you guys. Okay, church, I don't know how many people are up here because I start counting, we'll be just here all day. But every one of you count and every one of you matter. And you're making a decision to follow Jesus and put your faith in Him as a Savior, okay? He can set you free. He'll do it now. He'll give you eternal life. He'll forgive you. And I'll say this forgive yourself too. Stop beating yourself up. If he forgives you, you forgive yourself. Okay? Let's pray together. Okay? New beginning. Follow Jesus. Your next step, if you've not, if you're giving your life to Jesus, is get baptized and join our classes. Now you're going to be taught how to think differently, live differently. And this is your family. Every week, give me a year of your life. Keep coming to church. We're going to grow together. And I guarantee your life will change. All right, let's, let's, let's pray right now. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I confess you as my Savior. I know that I've sinned. I'm empty. I'm bound. I need freedom. I believe that you died and you suffered on the cross for my sins to save me. I receive the free gift of eternal life. I repent of all my sins. I'm tired of doing it my way. Save me. Make me into a new person. And set me free. In Jesus' name, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I am born again. Holy Spirit, come inside of me. Make me new. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come on, church. The altars are full in your church.